Let's find out if the depth blur neural filter from Photoshop is good enough to blur backgrounds and objects properly. Cause the AI is getting better and better and we should be impressed. Or should we? So this is the first example, let's call it level one. As you can see, the car and the background are in full focus. Oh, and by the way, can you guys tell me what car is this in the comments? I like it very much, even though it clearly needs a wash. So you can easily access the depth blur by going to filter, neural filters. You'll see a bunch of effects here. And here is the depth blur. We need to enable it. It says processing on device. Ooh, that's nice, because not so long ago, everything was processing in the cloud and it was way more time consuming than now. So you have two options to blur. The first one is to check the box with focus subject. The AI identifies the main subject of the photo. It keeps it in focus and then it tries to gradually blur the background and the foreground. And if you drag the focal range slider, you can increase or decrease the amount of blur. But to me, this doesn't look so natural. So I always enjoy the second method. First, I disable the focus subject. Now I can choose what's the main focus point on the image by clicking anywhere on this small preview. For example, I can set the focus point on the front tire and it creates a whole plane that's in focus. So it really simulates the organic blur, just like you were using a proper lens. Or I can set the point on the background and now the car is out of focus. So if I bring back the focus on the front tire, keep the focal range on minimum, on zero, this looks good to me. And, and trust me, nobody will know that you used AI to blur this photo. Photoshop just passed this test in my opinion. All right, let's take it to level two. This is a bit more complex. Each of these dolphins can be the main subject, right? So let's see how the AI handles this. I'm manually choosing the focus point and the depth blur does a fairly good job again. I can put the focus on any of the dolphins. I can switch it to the third one and I can also put the point on the first one and the rest of them, the rest of the dolphins get blurred. I can also change the blur amount and the AI is updating the image accordingly. But let me show you why this result is not perfect. The dolphins flipper from here is blurred and it shouldn't be because it's in the same plane with the water in this area. And this time, let me show you something interesting. If you enable output depth map only, you can clearly see what Photoshop's AI is doing here. It's trying to detect subjects and creates these gradients from black to white. This is very similar to a layer mask actually, where black hides and white reveals. But in this case, it's all about the blur. The dolphin's flipper is a much more darker gray than the dolphin itself and the water below. This is why it looks a bit weird when we look at the blur. So let me show you how to fix this. It's simple, but we will need some additional steps. I will choose output depth map only as a new layer. And then I simply press OK. So the depth map was added as a new layer. And to make it easy for this video, I renamed this layer to depth map. The next step is to add the layer mask to the layer that contains the image. Then with the mask selected, I go to image and apply image. From the drop down, I choose to apply the image from the layer called depth map. And then I click OK. Now I can just hide the depth map layer because I don't need it right now. I can even drag it below the image. And now I hold Alt and click on the layer mask because this will show what's on the mask only. And I clearly see that I need to make this area brighter to make the AI understand that it needs to apply the same amount of blur like for the water below. So I grab the quick selection tool, make a selection just for the flipper. You can use whatever selection method you want. This is really up to you. Then I go to select, modify, and expand the selection with, let's say, seven pixels. Next, I take the clone stamp tool, set the opacity and the flow to 100. I sample from this lighter area, and then I paint, making sure that I cover my selection. So now I can take the lasso tool and make an even bigger selection. It doesn't have to be precise. But then I go to filter again, blur, and choose Gaussian blur. And here I enter six, seven pixels for the blur just to make sure the edges of the flipper are not that sharp anymore. I can deselect with control D and now I can click on the image with the dolphins, not on the layer mask. Then go to filter, blur, 
lens blur. And here comes the fun part. As the source, I select layer mask because that's where my depth map is. And from here, it's really very easy. I can just click on the screen on each of the dolphins. And you can see that the blur looks much better now. When I choose the first dolphin, for example, I mean, the dolphin's flipper is in focus now as well. And this looks really good. And of course, I can change the blur intensity using the radius slider and then click OK. And after this, I make sure that I right click on the layer mask and delete it. Otherwise, I will not see the final image correctly. And here you can see a comparison between the neural filter depth blur and the lens blur filter after changing some things manually on the depth map. So did the AI pass this test? In my opinion, yes, because it was capable to detect the three dolphins, even though it had some minor problems detecting the flipper correctly. Am I right? Let's, let's pass this test as well. A beginner will not notice this. So let's give it another try with this image. This is level three of complexity. That's because the image has some noise or a grain and the subject stays on this bench. So let's see how it goes. With the focus subject active, the focal range set to 30 and the blur strength to 80, here are some things that I notice. The selection is not so good. This area behind the hands is not blurred properly. Also, the transition between the focus area and the blur area is too harsh here, for example. It also missed the blur again here. And also, parts of the coat are missing. You can see this if I disable and re-enable the blur. And even if I increase the focal range, this part of the coat doesn't come back. So this is a problem. But it did a good job on the hair, even if it's not really perfect. If I disable the focus subject, I bring the focus range to minimum and I set the focus point on his face, those parts from the coat are still causing problems. And also, there is a constant halo that appears around the subject right at the edges. I, I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. And also, part of his ear is missing, which is kind of funny. The good thing is that in regards to the grain, you can compensate for that by using this slider where you can control the amount you want to apply. However, you cannot control the grain size, maybe in the future. So at this level three of complexity, Photoshop's AI fails, but it will definitely improve in the future. Okay, but still, how can you solve the issues for this image? It will take a longer time, but you have two methods. Number one, you export the depth map only, and you try to bring back details by making selections, painting with the brush, maybe lowering the opacity of the depth map to see better, but this could be a tutorial for another time. Or you could try the second method, which is in this video on the screen, where I show you the safest method, in my opinion, to blur backgrounds in Photoshop. I'm Christy, thanks a lot for watching, and if you find some value here in this video, make sure you press the thumbs up.